Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. There are numerous hazardous and demanding roles within the U.S. military, but few are as intense as serving as a Navy diver. These individuals must not only deal with the usual dangers associated with military duty, but also operate in extreme underwater conditions. The U.S. Navy's diving history stretches back to the early 19th century. However, it was during the Civil War that the U.S. began using divers for salvage operations, ship repairs, and the removal of underwater obstacles. This showcased the value of a trained diving fleet. And since then, naval divers have become a staple in militaries around the globe. Today, prospective divers must complete a tough training and qualification process that covers physically intensive coursework in diving physics, human physiology, salvage operations, underwater construction, and handling hazardous substances. Navy divers must be ready to work in a broad spectrum of environments and situations. If a ship runs into an underwater obstacle, or sustains critical damage that needs inspection right away, divers can't just wait for ideal conditions. The Arctic is considered one of the most perilous diving locations. Divers need special certification to operate in such cold waters and must understand the effects of low temperatures on the human body including ways to avoid or treat hypothermia. To manage these dangers, Navy divers wear insulated wetsuits or specially designed dry suits that help retain body heat and prevent the cold from reaching them. They are also equipped with specific tools like ice picks, and ice axes, which allow them to break free if they become trapped beneath ice. A lesser known responsibility often given to Navy divers is examining a ship's degaussing system. Degaussing is the process of reducing or nullifying a vessel's magnetic field using various devices and techniques. Due to the magnetic materials used in equipment and sometimes the ship's own hull, vessels emit a magnetic signature that can trigger magnetic sensors or mines, posing serious risks. The degaussing procedure involves passing regulated electrical currents through the hull and magnetic components of the ship. This is frequently achieved using cables installed along the vessel's length and through strategically positioned degaussing stations. If the system fails, it could compromise the ship's safety and must be addressed promptly. The gear required by divers must be extremely high performing given the harsh environments in which they operate. U.S. Coast Guard divers, for example, perform tasks ranging from hull and propeller inspections to missions under polar ice caps. Working on propellers can be hazardous, but diving in icy conditions demands unique training because of the freezing temperatures and enclosed spaces. In such hostile settings, their skills and specialized equipment are what ensure success and survival.
Operations like the mission to extract oil from a sunken World War II ship highlight the nature of their work. Divers descended 180 feet to close oil valves on the Coimbra wreck. On May 11, 2019, a joint team from the U.S., Coast Guard and the New York Department of Environmental Conservation successfully removed 106,101 gallons of oil. Coimbra, a British freighter headed to Nova Scotia, was sunk by German U-boat 123 in January 1942, causing a major environmental disaster. Today, U.S. Coast Guard divers are trained to prevent similar environmental threats from worsening. Navy divers are also assigned to Explosive Ordnance Disposal, EOD teams. While countless sea mines from World Wars I and II still lie beneath the oceans, modern threats persist as well, like those in the Black Sea. NATO conducts annual exercises in the Baltic, where divers place charges on unexploded mines to safely destroy them. These operations also serve as opportunities for international diving teams to share methods, tools, and experiences. Divers sometimes face environments contaminated by radiation, The U.S. Navy has Radiological Control RADCON. Divers specifically trained to perform operations under such conditions. Their duties include maintaining and repairing components on nuclear-powered vessels. RADCON divers undergo detailed instruction on radiation safety and decontamination, wear suits designed to block exposure, and utilize radiation detection instruments throughout operations. Another critical duty is participating in submarine rescue missions. The NATO Submarine Rescue System, NSRS, jointly operated by France, Norway, and the UK, is designed to recover crews from sunken submarines and can operate at depths up to 600 meters. Although a full deployment of the NSRS hasn't occurred, its remotely piloted vehicle, RPV, was instrumental in rescuing seven Russian submariners in 2005 by severing cables that had pinned their sub to the ocean floor. The NSRS is made up of three main components an intervention unit, a rescue sub, and a transfer chamber that maintains pressure. The Undersea Rescue Chamber, URC, is a feat of engineering. Picture a large, pressurized cylinder capable of withstanding the deep sea environment. 
As a rule, descending air compresses under pressure, but the URC maintains a constant internal pressure for a stable atmosphere. Key elements include ballast tanks that fill with water to aid descent and drain for resurfacing. Inside, the chamber has two main sections, the skirt on top and the clamping unit below. The skirt houses rescued sailors, while the clamp connects securely to a distressed sub's hatch, creating a seal. This lets trapped sailors enter the chamber without flooding it. Once inside, the URC ascends, safely returning the personnel. So, how does the NSRS work as a whole? The NATO submarine rescue system has a rapid response team of underwater engineers capable of deploying anywhere in the world within 72 hours to aid submarines in trouble. Its three core elements are the Intervention Remotely Operated Vehicle, IROV, the Submarine Rescue Vehicle, SRV, and the Transfer Under Pressure, TUP unit. The IROV acts first, surveying the distressed submarine site, clearing obstructions around the hatch, and identifying the best rescue approach. Divers may assist by attaching an umbilical line to the sub, supplying it with air, communication, and power. The SRV, which can dive as deep as 610 meters, features a nose cap that locks onto the submarine's escape hatch, similar to the URC, allowing personnel to be safely transported. The Transfer Under Pressure Unit finalizes the rescue by helping the recovered crew adjust to normal pressure levels. After the SRV returns to the surface, crew members are moved to the tub system, where decompression protocols are carried out. This step is vital to avoid decompression sickness and ensures a safe transition for the rescued personnel. The full rescue sequence is tested during Exercise Dynamic Monarch. Although sea mines serve tactical goals, they are rarely removed by the forces that deploy them. That's why clearing abandoned or outdated mines is crucial for the safety of commercial, civilian, and military vessels. In the early 2000s, the U.S. introduced a new mine disposal method the Sea Fox Mine Neutralization System. This remotely operated vehicle, ROV, is specially designed to identify and disable sea mines with minimal human exposure. Controlled from ships or shore-based stations, the Sea Fox is guided through hazardous zones with great precision. It carries sonar and imaging gear to help spot underwater threats and can deploy a single-use explosive device directed by fiber optics to safely destroy mines. Best of all, the system is built for reuse 
improving the efficiency and affordability of mine clearing missions. Today, remote controlled vehicles have become key assets in military operations, particularly for removing mines on land and at sea. They lower the danger for EOD personnel by enabling them to neutralize explosives from a distance. As these machines advance with better sensors, GPS systems, and artificial intelligence, their efficiency only increases. Like the Sea Fox, more of these tools now include built-in mine neutralization capabilities. In the near future, Human involvement in clearing mines may no longer be necessary, reducing the risks to near zero. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.